Nathan Wade, a name people know because of his alleged lover. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis hired Wade as a special prosecutor on Georgia's Trump election interference case. Wade was able to reach a last minute deal to avoid testifying in his divorce hearing. That testimony could have put a spotlight on his alleged affair with Fonnie Willis. The Washington Post points out it's far from over. Quote, the settlement does not eliminate scrutiny of alleged actions by the two prosecutors, nor does it assure that the criminal case against Trump and his allies will continue. Wade also spent a lot of money on lavish luxury vacations, apparently to travel with Fonnie Willis, who again hired him. He made $650,000, according to published reports. Trump, on that case, and one of his co-defendants, are trying to convince the judge to completely disqualify Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade from the case. And Georgia Senate Republicans are forming a committee to look into that relationship between the two. Jason Chaffetz with this on Focus yesterday. The public's right to know far outweighs this. Um, I found it very interesting that Nathan Wade, evidently, according to the report I read, filed for divorce the day after he got this lavish $600,000 contract for a Ooh. job in which he had no experience. He had not done it. So I hope the court does the right thing here. The public has the right to know, particularly in this high-profile case. I Phil Holloway, former assistant district attorney, retired U.S. Navy, former police officer and legal advisor to Georgia's Sheriff's Department. So, Phil, you wrote this op-ed. I mentioned it earlier as we were going to commercial break, and it says this in part. Will Fulton County's RICO case against Trump die a death of a thousand cuts? What did you mean? Well, this has officially, Harris, become a public relations disaster at a very minimum. Uh, what's happening is you're seeing multiple efforts by individuals, defendants, co-defendants in the criminal case, entities such as the Georgia Senate that has now stood up officially a committee with subpoena power to, uh, to, to get it to the bottom of how she's spending her money. And so what they're looking at is whether or not she carried out her job duties, her oath of office, exercise her prosecutorial discretion in a legal or an illegal way. Did she spend taxpayer money uh, in a way that was designed to further her own personal interest in the form mm -hmm. of allegedly getting like a kickback uh, after steering a no-bid contract to her alleged lover? Or did she also perhaps use money in a way that advances a a political agenda uh, by by using federal funds that in the form of grants that funded travel by Nathan Wade or perhaps other people to communicate with the White House and and do that sort of uh, investigative technique that uh, really I think is probably a bit too far. It's probably improper to be bringing Joe Biden's White House into this at all. So these are the questions that are raised and if it can be proven that she violated the Constitution in the way of like a substitute due process claim that she was fundamentally unfair in how she carried out her prosecutorial duties, mm -hmm. then that could result in a dismissal so of the case. So it's interesting, because that affects her entire career on the first hand. The first part of what you mentioned doesn't have anything to do with Trump's case. It has to do with what she was doing with taxpayer money. And you can bet Georgia voters want to know about that. They want to know about that in Fulton County. And then you wrap in those visits uh, that have been reported with the White House, were they coordinating any kind of calendar items for other cases even that are going on against the former president of the United States, Donald Trump? It's fascinating. Death by a thousand cuts. Could you see the case against Trump going away, yes or no, and then we'll move quickly? I really could, Harris. I think that it could go away if for no other reason on a conflict of interest grounds because it's going to be very difficult to find another prosecutor willing to step in, in my opinion. Interesting. Okay. One of Hunter Biden's closest business partners, Eric Schwerin, gave a closed-door testimony to congressional impeachment investigators. Sources claim Sharon Schwerin said he gave free financial services to then-Vice President Joe Biden while doing business with his son, Hunter. Remember, Schwerin is the same associate who Joe Biden used aliases with to communicate. In his testimony, Schwerin said, I performed a number of administrative and bookkeeping tasks for the then Vice President Joe Biden related to his household finances. I'm not aware of any financial transactions or compensation that the VP received related to business conducted by any of his family members or their associates, nor any involvement by him 
in their businesses. One of Schwerin's former partners went after that, saying, coordinated and carefully worded statement there. House Oversight Chair James Comer said this. Sherwin was uh, the guy that paid Joe Biden's bills. He's the guy that did his bookkeeping. Joe Biden said there was a wall between the government uh, and himself and his family's shady business schemes. Uh, that's not true because they had the same bookkeeper, the same guy that did the books and, and, and paid all of Joe's, Joe's bills and, and deposited his checks and everything was the same guy Hunter Biden used. All right, so Phil, this just happened. The House Oversight Committee has tweeted that James Biden will now appear for a transcribed interview on January, on February, excuse me, 21st. So he's now going to go in. Talk to me about that development. Well, James Biden is very important, but the, the other guy is the fox literally guarding the hen house. You've got one of, uh, you, you've got one of, uh, Hunter Biden's uh, business associates doing the bookkeeping for Joe Biden when the overall question is how did the Biden family, including James Biden, mm -hmm. uh, get enriched to the tune of millions and millions of dollars through all of these myriad of shell companies that apparently provide no goods and no services that can be rendered uh, th that would justify receiving payment for those kind of things. So we, we've got to get to the bottom of this. I think that the, the fact that the sitting vice president uh, actually, that he's, he's getting free tax return services now that from, is his, from Hunter Biden's uh, business associate. That raises big questions. I mean, is that an illegal gift? Is that an illegal in-kind mm -hmm. sort of a gift by a sitting vice president? I think that the testimony uh, that was, I guess, happened yesterday, that's really not going to be all that helpful in the grand scheme of things for uh, the current president, Joe Biden, because... Uh, it just raises more questions than it than it provides answers, and it gives investigators a, a starting place. They need now are need to go in and determine: Did he lie or did he tell the truth? Can they corroborate his statements or can they disprove mm -hmm. them? And if so, well, that could and, open up an entire different can. Well, of worms. and it makes sense then, because I mean, you're going to start to put pressure on the people who were closest to the president. Now, these are not people who were maybe just hanging out in the periphery. This is his brother, James Biden. And, and he's one of those nine family re members, reportedly, that, that the House has been looking at, this, this committee. It's not a courtroom. It's a hearing. We'll be glued to it. Uh, you still have to tell the truth in both places. Good That's to right. see you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.